every day and night I hear dad 32 times and the very last words that he was able to, to just murmur out, daddy they're killing me. Meet Ron Thomas, the father of Kelly Thomas, a man beaten to death by the Fullerton, California Police Department on July 5th, 2011. Ron is a former Orange County Sheriff's deputy. Tomorrow marks the 10-year anniversary of Kelly Thomas's execution, and we traveled to speak with Ron and to interview him on camera. Kelly's death video is far too gruesome to be shown here. There will be a link in the description. We're live and also static, so if you want to introduce yourself and just uh, tell us who you are. And... Well, I'm Ron Thomas. I'm the father of Kelly Thomas. And right out here at the Fullerton Transportation Center, about 20 feet away, um, July 5th, 2011, 10 years ago tomorrow, as someone was brutally beaten to death by primarily three Fullerton police officers, and then it was ended up being six of them. Um, he literally bled to death in this gutter. Um, unfortunately, the criminal trial, I'll back up, fortunately, first time in Orange County's history, on-duty officers were charged with murder. Unfortunately, Orange County jury, jury couldn't even find them guilty of excessive force. And that's a tragedy in all of this. So 10 years later, there's still no justice. Uh, the Department of Justice sent me a letter stating there's nothing that they could do. No violations, no civil rights violations. Uh, it's all bullshit. And as far as accountability, we need to continue to hold what I call wayward officers accountable. There are some good professional men and women in law enforcement. There's no doubt about that. We certainly need them. But it's these wayward officers, the ones that think they're better than the rest of us, that take the law into their own hands. You, you were also an officer, correct? I was a deputy in Orange County, here in Orange County, California. And so I know, and I've seen them all. I, right. I've seen the bad cops, the ones that are, uh, they're so tough because they have a gun and a badge. We don't need them. Right. We don't need them. I hold the chiefs of police, the sheriffs, I hold them all accountable for their people. Uh, they, they need to do something with them uh, when they're discovered to have committed crimes. Um, the district attorneys need to file on them, and I, I don't give a shit that it's a delicate line that they walk because they need the officer's testimony in court to make their cases. I don't care. I don't care. They need to be prosecuted. They need to be charged and prosecuted, and that's the bottom line. It's the worst thing I've ever seen at all. I, I've never seen anything this bad. When I first released the pictures of what happened to my son, I actually took them in the hospital. And I released them to uh, uh, different affiliates in Europe. Uh, the Associated Press, AP, they picked it up in Europe. That's, then it started coming back into the United States because the United States uh, affiliates would not show something so gruesome, so horrible on TV. And finally, it started hitting the newspapers, different papers, and finally the news started showing it. Uh, that's how bad, that's how horrible it was. Right. Well, and I'm sure they were pissed off that, you know, you know that, that that got released, because let's, was, did they have body cameras back at, in that day, or is They it, didn't have it. Uh, if behind audio you up here is a, a camera up on a big pole, and the dispatcher from the police department actually controls that camera with a joystick. Okay. So... Uh, she was able to zoom in and and film the whole thing from up there. Okay. The audio came from their audio recorders okay. that they all wore. Right. And so it was all put together so they had film and audio they put together and synced it properly and then you had the whole thing. Okay. Is there a, a website for people to go if they wanted to donate money or any other resources or spread the word? Is, is there... Uh, well, I would... Uh, I would like to see people donate to organizations like NAMI, the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. Okay. And uh, you can just Google that. Uh, probably, no matter where they're at, there's an affiliate of it. Here in Orange County, there is the Orange County NAMI. Okay. Uh, that would be wonderful. Okay. What NAMI does, it helps families understand and work with, and how to work with, their loved one, their loved one with a mental illness. Right. Um, Donating is tricky. You know, uh, uh, like Goodwill, you know, you can donate and give to Goodwill all day long, but you have to understand that, that the CEO, you know, right. gets like 500000 a year. Yeah. Okay, where's the money going? Yeah. Help your neighbors. Yeah. You know, help your neighbors. What, that would be was, was there any further training to the Fullerton Police Department 
of use of force after this incident? I'll answer that, that question second. Okay. But on her point, which is an excellent point, training is only as good as the people that receive it and what they choose to do with it. Right. That's all training is. It's only good if you choose to use it in the right way. Um, one thing that uh, uh, I, I helped with and Kelly's Army really pushed for and got it uh, done is from San Diego to Bakersfield, probably eight years ago now, it started training for all law enforcement officers, no matter what they did, even Highway Patrol, every one of them had to go through specialized training on how to work with the homeless and the mentally ill. And so there, they were, it was all done. You know, and I've sat in on some of the seminars. They really didn't care to see me, but that's too bad. Right. Um, but everybody received it. Again, now, what do they do with the, the, the information? For some of them, it was just overtime pay, so what, I don't right. care. Yeah. Others, it's like, you know what, this has really helped me out. Now I understand that that person isn't just giving me, being a, a smart ass to right. me, but it's really hearing other voices and, and is mentally ill. I get that now. Right. Some have really come up to me and said that that didn't realize it before. Right. So it has helped some. There will always be sure. those groups, those cops, those whoever's that don't give a damn and will continue to violate policies, procedures, and beat up on us, the, uh, the population. What would you like people at home to, rem to know about your son or to remember about your son? Well, Kelly was a real good kid. I mean, he was great. He wasn't diagnosed with schizophrenia until about 22. And um, it's something that happens. Nobody, nobody wants to wake up one day and it's like, oh God, I think I'm mentally ill, this is great. Parents, no parents ever want to say, gee, I hope when our kid grows up, he's mentally ill or yeah. she's mentally ill. You know, so it's something that happens. But he was a great kid. And even on the streets here in Fullerton, up to the time yeah. he died, so many people have approached me and said, you know what, he was just a real delight to talk to, very peaceful, easy going. Um, he didn't deserve any of this, and if you see the video, and you can see it online, you can Google it, um, the Kelly Thomas beating, full video, just Google that, and it's going to break your heart, you're going to cry, definitely going to. Um, you're going to see that he tried to de-escalate. He even told uh, Ramos, here, just take me to jail, because he knew he was going to get hurt somehow, some way. He didn't want anything to do with it, and they weren't having it, they just, you know, easy prey. Yeah. for them but it's a it's a it's a horrible thing even the night it happened uh, Manuel Ramos who started the whole thing uh, who told my son with the gloves on you see these fists are getting ready to F you up you know this guy should have been dealt with he should have went into general population as far as I'm concerned yeah. you know yeah. he, he he really deserves something bad to happen to him. He where where is he now? Is he still working in law enforcement, do you know? or No, none sure? of them are. Okay. None of them are. Uh, uh, Ramos was doing construction, you know, with friends and family or whatever. I don't think he'll ever amount to anything. But um, they've tried to get their jobs back. That was shot down. i got to hand it to the city for never backing down on that decision. That that they, actually right. did that. they actually fought to get their jobs back. Right. Well, they did. And, uh, well, you know, it was, oh, we got not guilty. That means we did nothing wrong. Well, if we did nothing wrong, then you owe us our jobs back with all back pay. That's the angle that they took. And the city stood fast. I got to hand all compliments to Bruce Whitaker for that. Okay. Bruce did not back down a bit. Even though he's only one council member, he would not back down from it. And uh, today he's mayor and he still supports it completely. You know, He just wanted what was right. He always wanted to find out the truth. He never come out and, well, they all knew that that was excessive. It was horrible, of course. But he wanted the truth, and, and he always fought for the truth. So I'll hand him that. So did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what you've done is amazing. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I'm just doing what a dad should do. Yes. Yeah. Well, all dads should do, really. Everybody should do. We should all be here for our neighbors, for people that are Exactly. Well, we should take care of each other as human beings. We really should. You know, uh, one of the things that I really got mad at the, the county for and city of Fullerton, I called them on, I called the uh, city manager and, and really bitched at him about it is, it's probably been four years now, give or take, that the county 
with a collection from different cities, came up with $32 million for an animal shelter. For an animal shelter. $32 million for an animal shelter. And people were lying in the streets, dying in the streets. Kids, children, no fault of theirs. Living on the streets, can't eat dinner tonight. 32 million going to an animal shelter. Now I love my dogs, I love my pets. Boy, don't I, I sure do. Human beings are lying in the gutters. They need help, whatever kind of help it is, they need help. These are people, human beings. 32 million went to an animal shelter not to help people. You know? But it, yeah, but as far as police accountability, we the people, and I like that phrase a lot, we the people can never give up on it. We have to hold them accountable. And, you know, the, the camera capabilities, video capabilities on cell phones have made such a huge difference, you know, uh, and it started out quite honestly with Rodney King. Sure. There it was, right there. It started out with Rodney King. Now, was he a career criminal? Yeah. Was he this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he get beat down? unnecessarily, you better believe it. Assault with deadly weapons. I call a baton in a club. That's a deadly weapon. Yes. And they beat him, beat him, beat him because they were tired of chasing him when he ran off. Yeah. So, arrest him. You know, whatever, arrest him. But that's where it started with, with Rodney King and then the accountabilities. Well, and what I think it is to, to most people is most people don't see that side of law enforcement. And that was the Achilles, that was the, the, the dirty little secret that, law. you know, oh, well, we're no one's seeing this. Let's knock the hell out of this guy. You right. Know? So right. now we're getting to see from it, a different perspective. And even their own body cameras, which, which are making them guilty. And uh, about six years, and then I resigned. Yeah. Did you resign before or after this incident? Oh, a uh, good deal before. OK. OK. Yeah. All right. Good deal before. Yeah, it wasn't what I thought. Uh, I loved it. It was a childhood kind of dream and everything else. My dad was in the Sheriff's Department, 23 years, same department. And it's like, man, this is it. And then I found out the reality. Yeah. The reality of going down to downtown Santa Ana. Uh, don't remember the name of the bar. You know, they'd all have their tailgate parties. So you got a bunch of drunk cops driving home now. You know, and, and uh, all the, the abuse of power. Yeah. Well, that's right. The boathouse. It was the boathouse. It was the boathouse. Been there, done that. And um, you know, it was like, what the hell? And then, uh, like all deputies, I started out by working in the main jail in Santa Ana, and the abuse that happened in there. There are some real bad people in there. Okay. Right. There is absolutely some real bad people in this world, and there was some in there. But there were people in there that didn't deserve the treatment that they got. Right. That's well, right. Well, and if that's your baptism by fire, and because they do, because I'm from Los Angeles, and they do that same with the same thing with the sheriff's bar. Yeah. They're all in Twin Towers, Men's yep. Central Jail, Wayside. Yeah. That's their. Here you go. Welcome, the, you know, mm -hmm. just right cross to the jaw of like reality of throw you in the deep what end. the world is. Just yeah. throw you in the deep end. Yeah. 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 But you know, I got to see what was going on, and it just. I, it wasn't the best because when you're lower man on the pole, you get blamed. If you're not part of the clique, the group, or who you're working with, part of the team, if you're just out a little bit, you're out. Yeah. You're out. People won't come to your response uh, to back you up when needed, any of this type of thing. And that's one of the biggest problems in law enforcement is you rat out a buddy, who's going to come save you when the bank yeah. robbers are shooting at you? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, you're on your own. Yeah. Yeah. You're on your own, Snitch. That's, yeah. why there's not, that's why there's not so many people that are out there that are willing to put not only their job, but their life, their family's life, their security on the line. I understand. You know? Yeah. The eye opening you got, I, you know, I discussed with you my eye opening to your son. Your son opened my eyes to the other side of law enforcement. I was, yeah. You know, it, it breaks my heart to think that every day, right now, every day, there's somebody right now who's being harassed, who's being mistreated just because of how they look, whether it's because they're homeless or their money or, or for one reason or another. Right. We have to be there for each other. Yeah. Yeah. Every day. It's gonna, and it's going to continue. It will. It's, not it's going to continue. Because even like in Fullerton, who finally, it, it was Captain Hamilton that took over the chief spot to begin with. And then uh, oh, yeah. Captain Dan Hughes became the intern. Well, Hughes 
started out out of the academy at Fullerton. He was a rookie first day officer in Fullerton. So he made his way all the way up to captain. And this happened to my son. He was the captain over the patrol division. So he's the one, it was his men that did this. And they got to be held accountable for this. You know, that, that those are your guys, your policies, the way you let them do things. Be held accountable. Yeah. And they're not. More so than the average person. Yeah. Yeah. Held higher expectations, a, a much higher standard. That's what they got to be held to, and that's what we, the people, need to do. Is always high up, hold them to a higher standard. So, do you think that this is going, this is getting any better with some of the older cops that are actually leaving and the younger ones coming in, or do you think it's getting worse? No, I don't. You know, no. It's better or worse? I think it's back down to uh, um, ground zero because the officers that went through all the training are retiring. Right. Even though there's mandatory classes for the new, they're all excited. They got a gun and a badge, let's go get the bad guys. They don't have that empathy. Sure. Unless they have a relative or, or a brother or sister perhaps that, that's homeless or mentally ill. They don't have that concern. Well, and also in Los Angeles, I noticed that a lot of the younger guys are—they're all yoked up and like they're all MMA and they're all doing like they're oh, just—they're yeah. just waiting to try yeah. out the new shit. They, they you know, they, they want to—they want to get in a fight. Also. They want to get in a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the favorite ones—I mean, it just takes nothing. All of a sudden, you're in contempt of cops. Oh, absolutely. You know, what'd yeah. you say to me? We know that. Yeah. You know, it's like what'd you say to me? It's like yeah. So who the hell are you? I don't care. You know, and. Um, I had a cop talk to me just a couple days ago, and there's this woman cop, and she didn't know me from anybody, and it's it's like, I told her that, I said, so what am I, in contempt of cop now, because now you got a bad attitude? She knew the way I said it and the way I looked at her without any fear, there was something about my background. <laughs> well, you still got the cop mustache, though. So. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's, it, that's it, too. And she looked at me like, um, no, 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 there's no contempt of cop, you know, it's like, yeah, sure, I was in it immediately with you, you wanted to impress upon me that you're a cop, and I know it. Yeah, yeah, right, well, no power over the people that don't care, Yeah. you know. Thank you for All right, coming. thanks, Thank for, thanks for coming, and thanks, sir, I, I'm... Deeply sorry on behalf of everybody that's why I mean there's people from all over the world that yeah we're, we're live on YouTube as well so uh, Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What is your thoughts on law enforcement right now? You know what law enforcement is is great we need them we have to have them we have to have law enforcement but what we really really need in that also is good professional women in law enforcement who do you know their best. You know what it's like to be, I listen, I saw I know. What, what those women were treated like, I saw, they're not treated well. They gotta do their best to be as professional as possible. They're human <laughs> beings, so they're gonna make mistakes. They're gonna make mistakes. Own up to it, don't try and cover it up. Own up to it and get it settled, whatever it is, you know. You think the elimination of qualified immunity would change everything, most of this? It's gonna change, it's gonna change some of it and in a very good way because the more barriers we can take down that they can't hide behind right they need to be on a better behavior and so now with california finally knocking down most of povar the peace officer bill of rights and now we can actually look into the personnel files know that they were fired why were they fired all this right. now it can be admitted in court and during my son's case none of that could be brought forward right so well, it shows the strength of the police unions. And right, well, they pay for the governor's election, you know. And so, but now that, that's, those doors have been knocked out. And then you get rid of the immunity. Uh, okay, that's another thing they can't hide behind. So it's all better. Well, I never realized that qualified immunity was just made out of thin air by the Supreme Court. There was yeah. no vote. There was no, they just pulled it out of a hat. You know, like that. this is going to be something that happens from now on. You right. Know? I, I mean. Right. I mean, it was. In, in theory, it was to pr reduce frivolous lawsuits, so, I mean, uh, but it, it, it has failed miserably, as we've all witnessed. So I still believe in self-insurance. I believe that like, off, like, like doctors, like 
uh, police officers should carry their own insurance. And I believe that it would be a difference if they had to actually worry about this coming out of their own pocket or their own Yeah, job. we all live with, and so should they, right. recourse. Absolutely. Recourse. Because if you and I just go out and screw something up really bad, what's going to happen? Recourse for our actions. They need recourse for their actions. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, Indeed. It's good to well, meet you. Well, thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. And um, I thank you for coming out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because without everybody, without without Kelly's army, yeah, I would have been just one person demanding justice and got nowhere. Mm -hmm. So. I'm extremely grateful, I'm very thankful, and I'm very humbled for everything yeah. that's happened. Very humbled. You know, I think if the trial were to happen today, it would be a different outcome, I think, society. Well, it would because the evidence could be brought out. Yeah. <laughs> that's sure. the biggest yeah. deal right there. Yeah. That's the biggest part of it right there. So, indeed, no, things would be different for sure because we could use all kinds of things that weren't used before. Can you pursue, like, a civil? I'm sorry? Well, it was pursued. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, um, but you know, civil's never, well, I didn't really I'm give a shit about the civil. I didn't there. really care. And it's, it's the, the criminal trial. That's what I wanted. I wanted him in prison. Yeah. And that's the only thing I cared about is some kind of justice. Um, so the only justice now is that they walk out in front of a speeding bus, you know, and that's not really justice unless I was driving. <laughs> I mean, I'm, 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 I'm real. Yeah. I'm absolutely real when I speak. It would be karma, absolutely karma, if they walked out in front of the speeding bus. It would be justice if I was driving it. Yeah. So. And it seems like they don't have any remorse. <laughs> they have no remorse. Well, I'm driving ahead. They, not one of them has ever said to anybody at any time, I wish that didn't happen. I'm sorry that happened. They certainly haven't tried to say anything to me about it, even through yeah. their attorneys. They don't give a shit other than they got to go home and live their lives. So you know what they're doing today? They're having fireworks with their families. They're having barbecues. They're doing whatever people do. That's what they're doing. My son, I can't be with him. They took that away. You know, and I'll never forget that. Orange County Register was here, and yeah. she asked me, would you ever forgive? It's a question reporters need to ask. Yeah. I get that. I go, forgive? No, I wouldn't forgive. Yeah. He walked out in front of a, a police car going code three and it was accidental. I understand that. I don't understand brutally beating him to death when he's begging. Sir, please, I'm sorry, all this stuff. Yeah. And they kept going until he was dead. I don't understand that. I can't forgive that and I never will. You know, some people are like, well, you need to let go. No, I don't. Yeah. Why do you, who are you to tell me I need to let go? Why? You're and not, I'm not gonna, gonna forget, so you're not gonna and forget. And I'm not gonna let go, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. You know, and I'm the one that hears every day and night I hear dad 32 times in the very last words that he was able to, to just murmur out, daddy, they're killing me. Yeah. Forgive and forget, not this dad. Yeah. Not happening. Not happening. I was asked, well, what, why'd you leave Orange County? Because I might just walk right into him one day and that's not gonna be pretty. Yeah. I would not be able to keep my mouth shut. And where's it going to escalate to? Well, I probably know. Yeah. So I don't forgive and forget. Nothing like that. Accidents are accidents. I get it. I understand it. We yeah. all do them. Not that. Not yeah. That. So, all right. Well, thanks for coming out. Okay. Oh, you're Thank you so welcome. much.